Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a comparison between the different Biodynamic DT Pro models. So we're going to be comparing the sound, build quality, value for money between the DT Classic range, the newly released DT Pro X range, which I've been getting bombarded with questions about, and also the premium DT Pro range. Each of these ranges comes with both a closed and open back model, and I've made a video specifically about the differences between closed and open back and which one's right for you. But in this video, I'm really comparing the three different tiers, regardless of the closed or open back nature of the headphones. I've added chapter markers and timestamps to the video so that you can navigate to the part of the guide that you need. But first I wanna talk about my background with the headphones. I've been using the DT Classic range for the past four or five years. The new DT Pro X range, while they only came out about two weeks ago, I've actually been using these for over a year. I started with some prototype models and then I've been using the final ones for many months now. So I've really been sort of building my opinion of the headphones. Now Biodynamic sent these to me because I helped them make some videos, but this video is completely unsponsored. It's just my honest opinion about the headphones. And I've also been using the premium DT Pro headphones for around four years. I've used all of these in the open and closed back varieties. Just before we dive into the sound signature, I've just put the prices up on the screen. So I've tried to convert to US dollars as well, but the price will vary in your region, of course. With that sort of background out of the way, let's start with the sound quality because that's what most people are interested in. And it's not just a case of you pay more for a better sound. The three headphones really do sound vastly different to each other, but let's get into it. So the classic range, uh, they have a very strong and clean bass. They are lacking a little bit in that sub bass. So they don't have a really boomy and extended low end, but they do have a very solid bass. The sort of low mids and mid range is a little bit scooped or recessed. And then they have a really excellent treble response. So they get quite bright and there's a lot of clarity in these headphones. It's a very sort of well-known and trusted sound signature. Uh, the only issue people have is that you have to pick a different impedance of headphones for a different task. Now, again, I've made a video all about this but it means that sometimes these are not loud enough if you plug them into a particular device. Taking a listen to the new DT Pro X headphones, the first thing you'll notice is that they are significantly louder than both the classic and the premium range. What they've done is try to find one impedance and sensitivity that works for a lot of different devices. So whether I'm plugging it into my sort of studio audio interface or just plugging it into an iPad. It's always super loud if you want it to be. Now, I don't recommend listening to music particularly loud, but if you need that volume, which you sometimes can't get out of other headphones, you don't have a problem with these new ones. So you can turn them up louder, but what is that sound signature actually like to listen to? I'd say they have a similar bass response to the classic range, but where they've really reinforced it is in the sub bass. So it's still a very clean sub bass, but they just sound like they extend a lot deeper and they sound richer in that sub bass, which to be honest, makes them a lot more fun when you're producing. Then they're definitely warmer through the low mids. They don't feel scooped in the low mids or the mid range at all. However, they don't have the same airy treble response that the classic range or, or the premium range have. They're a lot smoother in the top end. And honestly, it's a really interesting treble response because it's not crispy or airy like you might normally be used to with biodynamic headphones, but it still has an awful lot of depth and it's very easy to still sort of hear where things are placed. The stereo image is brilliant. It just doesn't have that sort of airy quality that I know for some people can be a little bit fatiguing. But how do they compare to the premium DT Pro headphones? So firstly, starting with the bass and the sub bass, it's very similar to the Pro X. You get a very strong and clean sub bass and bass here. I'd say it's a little easier to sort of place and mix the sub bass frequencies in these in particular. They start sounding more sort of neutral or even maybe slightly recessed through the mid range. But then as you get to the treble, these become incredibly airy, very crispy. And this is what you want for a lot of the applications with these headphones, especially when you're mastering or doing critical mixing uh, decisions, that extra sort of airy analytical quality is usually what you need in those situations. But it can mean that for some people, it can be quite intense if you're not used to it. But I'm sure you'd agree if you could sit here and try these on listening to a range of music with me, you'd hear that it's not that one is better than the other. They really are three different headphones for three different types of user. 
Let's now take a look at the styling and quality. Now I don't want to show you any shots that are too fancy, I sort of just want to show you what these look like on my head to start off with. So for those that are wondering, my head is about 60 centimeters circumference, sort of measured uh, just above the ears. I don't know if that's helpful, but you can see the headphones look quite different on the head. This is all completely personal preference, whether you like it or not, but that should give you a bit of an idea. And now let's look at the sort of build quality and some close-up shots starting with the DT Classic range. I've really liked the build quality of these for many years. I think they're a solidly built pair of headphones and it's really easy to repair or replace them. The ear pads are incredibly soft and I know this is something most people notice about biodynamic ear, ear pads. They sit all the way over your ears and the headband and ear pads are both super easy to just unclip or pull off clean them or replace them. And this means that the classic range is still my favorite if you're sort of stocking up a recording studio with these, or you know you need to clean your headphones regularly for different clients or whatnot. Some people do voice concerns about there being a fixed cable. So they're worried that that might break or be difficult to replace. All I can say is that after using them for four or five years, I haven't had any of these cables break on me. The real issue for me with the fixed cable is that each impedance of these headphones comes with a different length cable. And sometimes you might be left with a cable that's far too long if you're just sitting at your desk or something like that. It seems that biodynamic listening Listened to a lot of those user concerns. So in the Pro X, these do have a detachable cable. Now I don't know if this would make it any uh, more difficult to break it because of course you could still break this if you pulled on it with a lot of strength. However, uh, what the detachable cable lets you do is swap out different lengths of cable for different tasks. But let's take a closer look at the actual sort of quality of these. So overall, they definitely have a much more minimalistic, maybe even refined quality to them. They've still got the metal yokes just like the classic range and the cups are plastic. It all feels pretty good to me. The ear pads on these are really special. They're by far the softest of any headphone that I've tried and you'll know that I've tried dozens of different headphones in the time that I've had this channel. But along with being incredibly soft, it's also really easy to remove and replace, even easier than the classic or the, the premium range. You just unclip it and there's like a little notch and a ring and you just clip it back in. It really almost couldn't be simpler. The headband again is very soft. I like the material used and you can also pull this out if you have to do any kind of maintenance or just for cleaning. They definitely do feel like a more premium experience over the classic range. Finally, let's take a look at the premium DT Pro range. These really do feel special. When you pick them up, you know immediately that you're holding the sort of flagship, sort of top of the range product. It's just got that sort of energy and feel to it. Of course, you know, the materials used here is no compromises. They're really comfortable. They are heavier than the other headphones but I've never really found an issue with the weight here because the clamping force, at least from my size of head, feels right and I measured it at around 60 centimeters like I said earlier. Unlike the other models, you can't remove the headband, but it is super easy to clean. Just every couple of months, I just sort of clean it with some water and it seems to clean up just as good as new. I do, however, find it much harder to replace the ear pads on these. They're really easy to take off. But they do take a couple of minutes to get back on if you don't, if you're not really super experienced with it. I always find that a bit of a problem with these ones. Um, however, overall, it's all, you know, exactly what you'd expect from the sort of top of the range product. So now that we've compared the price, the sound, the styling, the build quality, you can see that you can't really go wrong with any of them. They're all good value for money, but it's not as simple as just spending whatever budget you have. You can see that they're really made for different sorts of users. I mean, the DT Pro X range is working for me right now because I'm always testing out different devices. Sometimes I have to work on an iPad, on a mobile DAW, testing, you know, high-end preamps, budget interfaces, whatever I plug these into, they give me a really consistent sound and it's that consistency that I'm sort of really liking right now. The classic DT Pro range still represents the best value for money of any headphone I've tried and they're not just good as your first pair of headphones, these would be good for your whole career. Honestly, they last for such a long time, it's a really, really trusted sound profile. The issue is one pair of headphones is not going to suit every device you might need to plug it into, so you're going to need to you know, make sure that you've got the right impedance for the task. And while I wish I could take my DT premium headphones with me everywhere, the reality is that to get the most out of those premium headphones, you really do need to plug them into a high quality amplifier. But I would never want to take these on the go. They're the sort of headphones you want to keep them safe in your studio. The last thing I'd like to say is that if you're not sure which headphones you need, open, close back, any of these range, 
just let me know in the comments down below. Describe the situation, maybe the equipment you've got or what you want to use it with. I'd love to help you try and find out which headphones are best because I've been using all of these headphones for many years, but I've also used them with lots of different devices and compared them to different brands and models of headphones too. So if you need any help, leave a comment down below and I'd love to help you out. But thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you in the video next week. Bye for now.